just two seconds. I'm just making the recording on. So good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the class for our smart materials and structures. So before starting, can anyone let me know what we were dealing in the last class quick? Anyone can let me know what was been done dealt in the last class? Um, we started about active structures and that we uh, have two types, two types of uh, system using SMA and system PZT sensors and actuators. Yes. We had to uh, find field and Kronovic. Uh, uh, yes. to, uh, to determine the harmonic uh, by two, uh, they use actuators or uh, electron mechanical systems. Uh, Yeah, basically in the last class we dealt about one of the practically used PZT sensors and actuator based smart structure, right? So I told you that in your syllabus we have two active structures in practice. Kindly mute your mic, Sandesh. So in that we just focused on systems using PZT sensors and actuators. And I told that the system using SMA actuators is left out. So today we'll be doing accordingly. So in the last class, we studied who was the person who illustrated first the smart structure using PZT sensors and actuators. It was fine field, right? So he evaluated a set of sequential operations to check how an system could be made pakka for and smart structure by using PZT sensors and actuators. So we dealt with respect to an cantilever beam arrangement along with the piezoelectric patches, right? So we analyzed how well and well established smart structure could be developed by using PZT sensors, actuators and a controlling unit. So similarly, we just focused on acoustic application also, how one uh, smart structure could be developed even at, across the acoustic surfaces. So we had dealt till here. And uh, later I told you that these smart structures could be used for health monitoring of the bridges. So if you use the patches of PZT, right, across the bridges. So if I just show, this is an... Uh, prototype of PZT interference. So you'll be having a PZT here, which is nothing but the piezoelectric patch. So it will be bonded across by a safety packaging system. So you'll be having the bonded section towards both the sides. So this is a prototype. How does it look like? And it is just a miniature to show how the PZT sensors will be embedded across the bridge. You know the bridge you will be having a basement which is well established and it will be having a wall a supporting wall or a pillar to be strong enough to withstand the load which is passing across the bridge so these patches are nothing but the pzt sensors which are embedded okay so with this you can help to identify what is the health condition of the bridge and you can evaluate still how long it can withstand without collapsing. So by checking the health monitoring unit on daily basis or in regular interval of time, you can see when the bridge could collapse. So before that, any cracks, any fracture or any accidental part which can come in could be corrected and you can enhance the life of a bridge. So this also terms to be as a smart bridge because you are using PZT sensors across. So this is one more application. I told you I have to focus on one, but I've shown you two related to PZT sensors and actuators. Okay, so apart from that, you should be having the actuators here. Only if it sends and if it doesn't being taken in the form of any action, so then you cannot safeguard the bridge, right? So you should be having an actuator so here you have two actuators uh, 
actuator 1 and actuator 2. So you will be having a controlling unit which will be connected within the room where the person checks and operates, right? And the connectivity can be enhanced by means of optical fibers as well, what you have studied. So that the sensible data will be transferred to the optical fiber in a short period of time. And this controller unit will provide you the signals or the action with respect to what the actuator does the work. And as it turns to be as a smart bridge with the help of sensors, <coughs> piezoelectric sensors, the actuators along with the controlling unit. So this is one more example for smart structures using PZT sensors and actuators. Hope it is clear, guys. Any doubts? No. Yeah. So once this is done, so now it's our work to focus on second case to do or to develop smart structures based on actuators. So here actuators in the sense it could be a shape memory actuator, shape memory alloy based actuator, or it could be any other PZT based actuators as well. But here we are supposed to focus on shape memory alloy actuators. Right, so all actuators based off shape memory effect will respond for thermomechanical concept. You know that when you apply an electric field to it, it changes its phases from austenite to martensite, and when it cools, it comes back from martensite to austenite. Right, so these are the change of phase which takes place. So it can expand and contract. Suppose if you want to make a flower to glow. Right, so if you have made the petals of the flower through shape memory alloys, and if you send the signals with respect to the input as a form of a temperature, so that it can expand and it can contract. So you feel like the flower is opening and it is closing. So this is just a simple example how an actuator works of shape memory alloy based. So this concept could be used in domestic applications to decorate your homes, also for any other industrial applications as well. So where the intervention of human being at high temperature is not feasible. So it has many applications related to smart actuators. Smart actuators in the sense you are using the actuators in a structure so that that structure will be termed to be as a smart actuator. Right, so this could be done by any type of actuator. So here we are just focusing on an shape memory alloy based actuator. Right, so this work basically was done in the year 2003. So these people, they developed constitutive equations for shape memory alloys. So we have dealt with Sankar's equation, all those steps, right? So similarly for shape memory alloys, these fellows have also done it. 3D constitutive equation, right? So by doing the mathematical equation, they checked the simulation performance, how it is. And later they performed the experimental part and they compared whether the modeling part is comparative with respect of the experimental data. And both was almost similar. And hence they started applying this concept for various applications. So you have various applications related to smart actuators as well. So before going, you needed to know two concepts. One is it responds to thermomechanical transformations because these are made up of shape memory alloys. So it can act even at a high temperature. So there is no like uh, constraint with respect to temperature effect. With respect to any range of temperature, the shape memory actuators could work in, right? So to check that only these fellows have tested the Mathematical modeling with respect to simulation and they compared with respect to the experimental data. So almost was similar. If one line is of theoretical, the other one is of experimental. So they have checked it is almost of the same nature. So they did the simulation and compared with the experimental data. And you know that shape memory alloy devices could be always figured out or synthesized in the form of wires. Right. So they prepared a double coil SMA spring wire. Right. They tested this experimentally and also they did the analysis using finite element method, abacus or even through ANSYS it could be done. So after that they compared the results, how it is showing the variation when it is subjected to the mechanical loading or to the high temperature effects. 
so once it was performing very well uh, as in shape memory alloy so later you cannot use this single wire as a device you should embed that into some material so this fellows what they did is they embedded the shape memory alloy which has been synthesized into an composite embedding means you are integrating you are adding it into an material so they added the shape memory alloy wire into the composite material and they tested right so this could be called as an spring based actuator which is made up of shape memory alloy right so always you have to keep in mind if it is a shape memory alloy based actuator you will be having the shape memory alloy in the form of a spring which will be usually of double coil nature but you cannot handle that alone as a device it has to be housed or packaged within an outside material so you added this to an composite material it could be of any composite material based on the application so then that can be termed to be as a device right so later that was tested whether it performs well as an actuator by varying the temperature as well as the mechanical loading so then they told that it was working out successfully so this was one concept the persons who evaluated in the year 2003 so this is an just regular example to explain how an smart actuator works with respect to an shape memory alloy based right so every time you should see that you should be aware of doing the modeling and simulation and that has to be checked with the experimental aspect and to check the experimental aspect you have to synthesize the shape memory alloy wire and then you have to embed that into any smart material or even to any composite material which has convenience in adherence so the amount of feasibility in getting the compactness between the shape memory alloy and the material what you select should be uh pakka or else what happens that if if it does not adhere properly then you won't get good result so you have to select the materials which are suitable for shape memory alloy based wires so then we can make the devices so this is about the smart actuators right so as per your uh, syllabus the smart actuators examples are being given right so two types of examples are given so this examples what we are now going to tell you will summarize the clear description between the analytical approach as well as the experimental procedure so you will come to know like what is the approach you need to follow to do an analysis uh by numerical method or to perform an experimental result data because you need to know the both the ways or else it is highly impossible to claim a device of shape memory actuator because before doing a device you should test its analytical properties for that a numerical method a mathematical equation is very much essential and hence here we are focusing with respect to two examples the first example mainly dealt about the mechanics of the sma actuators okay where in the second example what we are dealing it depends on seeing how one simple laboratory structure could be controlled so you have n number of laboratories so we will be having n number of experiments what we need to do so how you can control a laboratory structure such that you can claim that laboratory as a smart laboratory so without an lab instructor if the students come in and if the teacher is not there if the students are there so the lab should be in such a position that it should be able to guide the students so that they can perform the experiment and go in the absence of the lab instructor as well as the teacher so that shows how smart your laboratory is so it has to be provided with all the required input data the instructions what the student has to follow so everything so it is nothing but a simple laboratory structure so you will know both the mathematical part as well as the laboratory structure right 
so these are the things what you have to keep in mind so this explanation you have to think about it was mainly focused on feedback control system so they had a feedback control system so when we speak about a smart structure it is always necessary to work in a closed in a closed loop because you'll be having a control system with the feedback so when you come to know what the process is going on with the help of feedback any changes if it is needed so then we can fine tune so that no problem comes in with respect to the smart structures which are been developed so this system explains the feedback control system which is embedded based on the sma actuators so this work could be done by any other actuators also but here we are focusing only on sma based actuators so that you have to keep in mind so sma actuators in the sense how it looks like these are nothing but the sma wires which will be bonded or embedded on any other composite material so you have to select which is the media in which you embed the sma wire actuators because sma wire actuators will be very thin and delicate you cannot directly handle and perform you need some supporting base material so that should be anything so which responds to sma wire as a form of actuators so we usually select an composite device so here we are making use of composite beam specimens so as i told you in the prerequisite information all the sma wires which are developed will be embedded into an composite beam specimen okay so when you embed this into a beam what happens that you should assign fixed boundary condition i told you the degree of freedom plays a very vital role a beam is nothing but it acts as a cantilever so when cantilever comes into picture it has to be constrained at one end and the other end should be made free so that it can move to and fro when the load is been subjected so the load could be subjected across the tip either at the top or at the bottom so that load what you have apply will be nothing but the axial load and the axial load what we apply will be an controllable one remember we are using an controller unit so this controller unit will provide you the feedback also how the performance is happening if the load subjected is very high so then the feedback will tell you that it is higher than that of the bearable so with the instruction of the feedback you can reduce the load which has been applied because it will use the controlling strategies we use, we studied this in last to last class right controllable strategies so all the concepts you have to keep in mind then only you can apply to any device what you want to do so now you can understand the structure what we are speaking about is of sma wire actuator so which consists of an composite beam in which the sma wire is been embedded so that is nothing but our cantilever so when cantilever comes into picture it has to be constrained at one hand to provide the required boundary condition and at the other end you will be subjected to an axial load so this is the image what you can see here basically you know that what is a commonly used to sma we had two classification of sma one is can you just tell which are those do you remember do you remember or you have forgotten we have studied that for your either first year second internals classification of sma one is based on nickel based and other one is of copper based so i told that nickel based shape memory alloys are most commonly used because of its good properties even though it is expensive in nature so here you can see that the shape memory wire which is been used is nickel titanium based one so these are the wires which are been synthesized so this synthesized wires of shape memory alloy will work as an actuator so this is embedded across the beam so this entire rectangular cross section what we see is nothing but the specimen which is considered to be as an cantilever beam so it is made up of an composite material it could be of any composite material which suits the shape memory alloy wire so on the surface of the beam you have uh, embedded this shape memory alloy wire which has been synthesized and 
across the center of the beam you will be having a strain gauge why strain gauge is needed because it has to control it has to sense the strain induced in the entire beam due to the tip mass and it helps you to send the signals what is the amount of strain induced you should know what is the strain rate developed right so based on that it will send the information to the controller so that it can read and provide the instructions for the actuator to perform and tell whether the load applied is efficient enough to get the different modes of frequencies like so this is how it has been uh, established and here one thing you have to understand is the cantilever beam here is an aluminum based one what that person has been claimed and he has used a dimension of the cantilever beam which was of 47 inches in length 6 inch in width and it was 0.25 0.125 inches in the thickness so the thickness was very less so if the thickness of the beam is high then it won't easily move to and fro when the load is subjected and it is constrained on the other end so we see that the thickness of the cantilever beam used will be comparatively lesser so that it can have the to and fro motion freely without any barrier with respect to the dimension parameters so this was the arrangement what he has done to develop the smart actuator any doubts until here is it clear enough yes ma'am okay yes ma'am so yes and later after the development uh, of the cantilever beam and its arrangement so he started doing the experimentation so as i told you the safe memory alloy wires were pasted across the beam right so across the neutral axis of the beam the strain gauge was being mounted so here i show this is a neutral axis of the beam so i have what i have explained has been informed here and then he started doing the experimentation part so when he started doing the experimentation and he verified so he could find that the moment was developed across the critical load so what do you mean by critical load so you'll come to know you start applying the load the tip mass right from very less value to that of the high so there will be some value which is the lower lim upper limit a cantilever beam can withstand so that will be nothing but the critical load so above that you cannot perform the experiment because the cantilever beam can collapse due to overloaded so this controller unit what we use it also helps to determine what is the critical load the beam can bear, bear. okay so with respect to the tip mass applied the uh, shape memory alloy wire which has been pasted over here can expand and contract so when you have subjected that to an mechanical you know that the shape memory alloy will respond for mechanical loading as well as for temperature effect so here it is a case of an mechanical loading which is subjected to the tip mass so this uh, expansion compression deformation will be taken care with respect to the shape memory alloys which are been pasted previously we studied cantilever structures with respect to pzt patches if you remember as unimorph and biomorph but here in this case we are replacing that with a wire of shape memory based actuator but the principle and the concept is the same only thing we are changing the type of materials what we are using the same kind of structures are explained here for you to understand the bifurcation between pzt sensors and actuators and the smart actuators which are made up of shape memory alloys so this is what i just wanted to tell so later he started doing the experimentation so here the moment which comes into the picture due to the tip mass the bending moment is represented here as m suffix sma so the moment across the shape memory alloy wire okay so that is called to be as m suffix sma so that you have to remember right so when he performed the test he started adding a minimum load then he tried to enhance the load so based on the 
load applied in the beam the deflection started coming into picture so when he started performing the test he saw that the deflection was first initiated across the midpoint so at the midpoint it started receiving the deflections and hence the axial compression which was produced due to the deflection was nothing but the moment so the moment which was developed at the midpoint was specified here to be as m suffix p so you should be knowing the difference between the moment across the midpoint as well as the moment across the entire shape memory alloy wire so you have two type of moments which are distributed due to the tip mass which has been subjected so you should be knowing about the parameters and later the deflection i told you it came across the midpoint so lateral deflection how much was the lateral deflection of the beam across the midpoint has to be sensed by something or else how we will come to know because you are not connecting that to any controlling any oscilloscope here in pzt sensors we had a oscilloscope here which measured the variation if you remember we had an oscilloscope we had an uh, shaker to get the electromechanical vibration and we had an input right so wherein in case of uh, sma actuators we don't have so much components right so you should be having something which senses and performs the work so the lateral deflection which is nothing but the delta which comes across in the beam due to the tip mass was sensed okay and it was also controlled it was sensed and it was controlled so this controlling unit the work will be taken care by the sma only it controls and it provides the instruction so based on the instruction the sma wire performs the work so what happens when it reads the lateral deflection across the midpoint it will be sensed and once it is sensed the data will be controlled so which is a required deflection if it is excess how it has to be overcome so based on the actual deflection data so then the sma wire which is applied across the cantilever at both the end starts getting heated up due to uh, sending of the electrical current so then it gets expanded and then again it compresses so due to this the buckling phenomena comes into the picture across the column of the cantilever beam so the buckling analysis has to be done so that will be performed by using conventional euler method so when expansion and compression takes place in the given cantilever beam so it gets expand and compressed due to this wire and due to this since it has a length if the if we are speaking about the column because buckling comes into picture when you have an object with a vertical height so if it compress and expands then buckling analysis comes because it bulges across a particular position so then you should do the buckling analysis and perform to what rate it has buckling has come into picture so this buckling analysis was done by conventional euler method and he also tried in one more method which was called by him as cut and paste method so what was this cut and paste it was a crude method which was been followed and compared with that of conventional euler method in cut and paste method so they checked what is the stress which has been induced due to the variation in the load so when the shape memory alloy compress and expand so when it compress and expand what is the displacement you are getting in the cantilever so those two values were figured out you are computed manually right and that data was used to compare the buckling analysis with respect to conventional euler method so he did this in the both the way and he claimed that both yielded the similar results right so both the method the crude method as well as the actual regular method what he tried yielded with the similar results and hence he claimed that it was predicted and verified experimentally cut and paste method with respect to the modes of cantilever beam to and fro motion the displacement the displacement values were measured 
So this is an experimental data. So this experimental data was compared with conventional Euler method means this is the mathematical model equation what he is doing. So both theoretical and the experimental data was verified. So this was the claim what he told. So both was verified clearly and the moment which come across the shape memory alloy he told that it could be used to increase the critical load of the column. So the column of the beam, it can bear certain load. So that is called to be as critical load. So by controlling the moment value of a shape memory alloy, he told that we can enhance the critical loading behavior for the given cantilever beam. So that is a beautiful thing what he told. Because or else we'll be in a state of mind, we are selecting some composite material and some SMA wire. So how we'll come to know which is the critical value the beam can withstand so he told that is so he told it is very essential to calculate the moment of the shape memory alloy so by controlling or fine tuning this moment of the shape memory alloy we can enhance the load bearing capacity which is nothing but the critical loading of the column of the cantilever beam what we are using so this was a claim what he did Okay, so this was uh, one part what he claimed and he did successfully, right? And he also told in very rare cases, the moment produced by shape memory alloy wires was greater than the initial displacement. So what do you mean by this? So before subjecting the tip mass, when you constrain the cantilever beam, due to addition of shape memory alloy, the beam can move to and fro slightly. So it will be having an initial displacement before it is embedded within a control system. So he claimed that the moment which was produced by those shape memory wires was greater than the initial displacement that was been recovered. So this was one more statement what he concluded after doing the experimentation. So this claims what was being told was later verified with respect to the initial displacement and its threshold values experimentally. And he also concluded the same by and the person who did this was Choi and Lee in the year 1998. So this was the part purely experimental one what he did it by deriving some simple mathematical equations but the entire process which was now discussed here was then compared with the mathematical modeling equation so this is the second part okay so who was that person he was Ree and Koval so he was the person who performed the same type of test by using a very simple structure because if you go for complex structure doing the modeling and doing its analysis and getting the data will be very time consuming and complicated so he used a simple structure for modeling and to analyze the data which was performed experimentally over here so this was the experimental data and same thing later was studied by re and kuvel for mathematical modeling so I'm not going into depth in mathematical modeling equations. I'm just telling in brief because this is the actual thing which has been done. If they ask you the best practices with across shape memory alloy actuators, you should be able to explain the experimental and the theoretical approach. So this person, Ree and Koval, he used the shape uh, memory alloy wires as an actuators. Okay, so in both this, uh, he considered the structures in which the actuator wires were embedded. And he considered these structures as the transfer functions. Okay, because they should be have you should be having some parameters which has to be transferred from input to that of the output. So then only you can vary the input parameters to get the required output parameters. So that is essential to develop a model. I told you that has to be done by using differential equations 
so you will be having k matrix and m matrix which should be symmetric in nature i told you how and modeling has to be done in last class right so and as he needs transfer functions which tells you how the input data is transferred into the output so he claimed that the sma wire which is bounded on the structure across both the end will act as a transfer function why because it expands and compresses based on the input given to it so the input could be a tip mass or an electrical current so the input data will be transferred into some output data so this transfer functions is necessary to develop the model he told so similarly he developed a mathematical model and one more thing i told you in explaining the modeling concept right so what else we need you need an closed loop system so along with that of the functional parameters to once the model is developed you should be having a closed loop system structure so this closed loop system structure could be designed by using the classical laws okay so this are the same thing what we dealt with respect to the modeling as a modeling concept so the same thing he followed and he told that these are the things which has been needed so once he kept all this concepts so later he derived a first order model so this was a first order model what he developed so here he wrote to into f plus f is equal to a suffix b into p so what was these parameters so f dot it is means the force equation what we are using will be differentiated into will be differentiated once so that will be multiplied into the time so what is the time period taken to expand initially when a force is subjected the force is nothing but the mechanical loading so this is one component right and then it is equated towards our right hand side with a suffix b into p so what is a suffix b it is a slope what we get for force versus power curve so when the shape memory alloy is expanding and compressing so it is expanding and compressing due to subjected temperature or the power right so that you will be taking care in x axis and then you will be having the force right so then you draw the slope and take the value of the slope so that will be a suffix b so how you determine the power supply to the wire that will be given by v square upon r so you will be having an um, amplifier kind of thing so which supplies the required electrical current so that current will be speaking with respect to the voltage supplied and the wire through which the entire open loop or closed loop system develop so that wire will be having some resistivity in it so you have to include that value also so power will be nothing but v square upon r because we know that p is equal to v square into r you have studied from basic 11 12 also the same thing has been used here so based on that he developed this mathematical equation so here to check whether it's working properly he assigned the time constant to be as like for 5 seconds so when you are subjecting the cantilever beam with respect to the supplying of the electrical voltage for 5 seconds what are the variations you are getting how much compression and expansion of the shape memory alloy wire is happening so based on that you can measure the responses of the force so this was the thing what he developed and uh, he concluded that the force versus power curve found a slope value of 1.25 value okay so this a suffix b which is the slope of the force versus power curve was termed to be as 1.25 was the magnitude what he concluded so this was the equation what he developed and later he just went into depth to find out the values of uh, voltages what is the frequency of mode of vibration which was getting into and what is the amount of transfer function why transfer function is coming into picture here transfer function is referred by letter g suffix a here so transfer function i told you what is the input given and how it has been transferred to get the required output so that transfer function was calculated by using this equation so no need of going into depth so much but you should be knowing how the 
model was been developed by the person re and koval so later he used this mathematical model to develop the transfer function and if you can finally show the equation also that is more than enough so basically we were dealing to identify the transfer function of it right so this is the purpose so this was the one thing what the one person determined the ex experimental approach later it was compared with that of the mathematical modeling by the person re so this was one way with one uh, closed system with some constraints of degree of freedom later there was one more case study which was dealt associated with this any doubts in this until here no ma'am okay so after that we had one more case so here this was a structure developed and they provided a 3 degree of freedom based structure and it also had a feedback controlling unit right so here you can see so this is the sketch which has been developed for the smart structure again even in this smart structure had strain gauges here it had two strain gauges because it was little bit bigger and you can see the smart uh sorry the smart wire or the shape memory alloy wire so here you had one shape memory alloy wire and here also you had the shape memory alloy wire which was crossed connected and these were the three beams beam 1 beam 2 and beam 3 which was connected together and you had uh, since you have three beams it is difficult to get the required expansion and contraction by using a single wire of shape memory alloy and hence they used two wires over here so that you it will interconnect at a particular point and it will be having like an grip more enough to expand and uh, contract to contract and expand when the temperature has been subjected to it but this two will not be sufficient because you have a third cantilever beam here m3 even that has to be supported so here one more was fixed from the neutral uh, from the support here at the back end so you had one more nickel titanium based uh, shape memory alloy wire which was been clamped so to know what is the strain induced across the beam 1 2 and 3 you should be having some strain gauges so those strain gauges were placed across the supporting column structures so you had two strain gauges here because you have more than two beams totally three beams at least minimum two strain gauges is needed so two strain gauges were mounted to check what is the strain rate which has been induced across the given beam right and it also checks the monitoring the health monitoring of the beam so that it is not in a situation where it gets break down so that conditioning uh, verification was done by the controller what we used so based on the signal received and based on the conditions whether the beam is safe or not once it was cleared so then it will provide set of instructions for the work to be completed so if everything goes on work then the actuator does it work it compresses expand compresses and expand so this is the thing how the arrangement was made and similarly here also this process entire process was modeled right so to modeling you need and design of the controller so the controller designer unit was performed and that design unit was analyzed or it was studied and a 3 degree of freedom was provided for the spring mass which is associated with this diagram okay so you have the fixed end over here right so this is the entire closed loop system so 3 degree of freedom was provided for this structure to do the required analysis and one more thing what you have to understand here is this was a simplified siso model because apart from this if the model gets enhanced then solving this analytically using mathematical model will be very difficult so this was the case 
which was done by using three cantilever beam since you use three cantilever beam we assigned with three degree of freedom since there were three cantilever beam we were supposed to use three type of three uh, shape memory alloy wires so two crossed and one across in the vertical height so to know the variation and to perform the work you need should be having a controller unit so to perform the work something has to be sensed so we use strain gauges to take the strain rate and that was given to the controller unit to check whether it is working properly is everything safe or any changes has to be happened and later if when everything is going on properly so then you get the required compression and expansion and the required data could be obtained so what are the displacement the cantilever beam is coming across so that could be rectified so this is how a smart structure works even at 3 degree of freedom has been shown over here i have explained you the concept the same person has developed an uh, matrix system right so he can write all these values based on the experimental data so once the mathematical modeling equation has been done he will substitute the values for that and get the symmetric matrix so for each thing okay so you will be having mx plus you will be having like uh, k times of x and again the displacement values what you are getting is equal to some function related to the transfer function right so based on that the data what the person had done experimentally will be taken and substituted in the matrix so later after doing that he related that to the state space equation and he calculated theoretically this much depth is not needed what you need, need to know is it can be devised for a simple structure it can be devised for a complex structure how you will devise for a simple structure how you devise for a complex structure so that you should be aware so in both the cases we have checked with the experimental data so this was the experimental data and this was checked with that of the mathematical modeling equation also so this was a basic mathematical modeling equation what he did and this was for a simple structure similarly the same type was and simple this was a simple structure and easily he found it the transfer function which is g suffix a of s similarly here also thus this was done but was not for a simple structure it is a complex structure right so due to complex structure the matrix system comes into picture so after using this he finally concluded the transfer function based on the variation in the distance so there'll be an like stand off distance parameter what you have to determine so that much theoretical data is not needed but you should be knowing to explain in practice how a smart structure works by using a shape memory alloy wire as an actuator similarly you should be knowing for an pzt sensors and actuators what we dealt in the last class usually one question comes into the uh, examination like uh, explain the practice of shape memory alloy actuators as a smart structure or pzt actuators and sensors where they are used used or in practice so then you should be able to explain right from its concept drawing the sketch how they did experimental part and later how they uh, compared with the theoretical approach so if you are able to compare both and write out beautifully so you will be able to get a good marks so this was the last part of our uh, module 3 which was pending so what i have completed so from tomorrow's class we will be starting up with the fourth module which will be related to mems so please don't miss any classes be regular and attentive so let me ask some questions to you all right now so how was the day for everyone was it understandable yes ma'am yeah so sukrut let me start from you only so what did you understand in today's class what we dealt about basically i'm a smart actuators analysis of the smart actuators and uh, different examples i mean uh, there are two examples in the smart actuators and uh, first order model and the uh, 3 degree of freedom that's uh, such a with our yeah. feedback
Okay. Can you think any device made up of smart material actuators have you come across? Yeah, at least have you browsed out to see which could be the device which has been made? I told you one example, laboratories. So even that is a good example. Like that, have you thought in your mind or in your insight what could be developed? Or else just take two minutes, think and let me know. Until then, I'll ask someone else, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So next, Mr. Danush. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The question for you is, you now know what do you mean by a smart structure? It could be developed by PZT sensors and it could be developed by SMA actuators as well. So which is more convenient and economical to go in? Any idea? Ma'am, in the sense, uh, smart structure with the SMA will be more uh, efficient, ma'am. How can you justify? Ma'am, because it uh, it responds to all uh, thermomechanical uh, uh, actuations and uh, it can work in any sort of uh, temperature, ma'am. Yes, so that is the main thing. The drawback is in PZT based, it has to be polarized and you have to see that the polarization is there for longer run. If there is no polarization, then it won't work properly. So it is like uh, maintaining those devices will be ridiculous as you have to do the polling and keep it ready always. So that is one drawback. So with that aspect, what you told us, right? Okay. So yeah. Thank you. So next person, Mohanambal. Mohanambal, you are there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So how was the day? What did you understand today? Like about the smart actuators. Yeah, um, yeah. Like uh, we discussed about that Joe and Lee, what all he has, uh, results he has done on his experiment. Yes. Smart actuators, so uh, that derivation, first hmm. order model. Yeah, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And then we studied about the uh, three degree of freedom structure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where two uh, wires are used. Like <clears throat> Not only two, uh, it is three. If you are using three beams, basically you will get three SMA wires. If you are still going for a larger complex structure, then the SMA wire may be needed for around four also. So this type of complex structure get increased when you want the beam to bear more amount of load. You see a single beam cannot withstand large amount of load. So when you add on these beams, so then the strength of bearing load bearing capacity also increases. So when you are making a device of complex structure in that way, then the need of even the SMA wires also get enhanced. So to compensate the load bearing capacity with respect to SMA wires, we usually take one SMA wire for one beam. So similarly like that you can add on. And if you add one extra also, nothing won't happen. Okay. So okay. this is the thing what you have to keep in mind. Fine yeah. then. Mithun. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, how are you? Fine, ma'am. Okay, so what did you understand today? How you feel about the smart structures? Today we have learnt about the smart actuators. Hmm. How smart way behaves with specific actuators. Yes. And uh, what is the maximum amount of critical load you can apply hmm. based on the moment? Right. So what idea came into your mind after going all this? If anyone asks you to make a device, whether you opt for SMA type of smart structure, yeah, piezo type of smart structure. SMA smart structure. Okay. So you are happy with SMA rather than that of piezo based one, right? Fine. I, if I tell you to make a device using SMA, what is the device you will be planning for? Smart home. Smart? Home. Smart room. Home, home. Smart home. Yes, ma'am. 
okay 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 think about what are the things which are essential for a smart home let me provide an assignment on this for everyone let me see how beautifully you will come across okay i think that will be your assignment for the third module in common let me see how all the seven members will come out with seven different ideas fine thank you for giving me one question for your assignment matu okay yeah so shrinidhi shrinidhi you are there yes ma'am yeah how are you yes, how, how was the day was uh, it boring good, enough was it boring enough listening to the class no ma'am okay so tell me what you studied today ma'am we studied about uh, smart structure uh, based on uh, actuator first ma'am okay and uh, two examples hmm uh, one was uh, uh, based on uh, that uh, coval and uh, re uh, experiment model analytical and experiment uh, procedures we saw right then we saw the results varying with the initial displacement and the threshold value then the exactly. second one was about the three uh, dof structure of feedback control we saw mom hmm 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 we okay. studied the equation of uh, force time constant and voltage uh, thing also the transfer function also we studied right yes yes okay okay then thank you shrinidhi and lastly harsha you are there yes ma'am yeah so what did you take today home related to smart structures from today's class ma'am we are dealing with today smart structure smart structures based on the actuators ma'am hmm and next to uh, analytical Let's go on experimental model of the structures, ma'am. Okay. And the equation of the force and the constant of the structure. Okay. So finally, how do you feel about this chapter? We are almost to the end of this module. Which topic was most interesting? Was it related to optical fibers? Yeah, related to control of structures. yeah both yeah which was more comfortable for you in understanding sorry we had even vibration absorbers also smart structures yeah ma'am are okay 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 no problem so well i hope all are listening carefully that's good uh, so everyone kindly type your name and usn in the chat room i think who has not written harsha harsha Fine. kindly type yeah uh -huh. fine i'll just take the attendance 2 seconds you can mute your mic harsha uh -huh. Danush Yes ma'am Mithun Yes ma'am Mohan Ambal Yes ma'am Sandesh Yes ma'am Srinidhi Srinidhi Okay okay Sukrut Yes ma'am And Shri Harsha Yes ma'am Okay everyone take care and have a nice day so we will meet yeah hello ma'am uh, miss sukrut ma'am uh, yesterday i was in the meeting in the last due to network issue i could not uh, tell the attendance ma'am sukrut right i have given you the attendance on yesterday's class right yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah 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 yesterday in the sense on uh, yeah yesterday's class only yes Tuesday, yesterday yeah 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 thank you thank you Yeah so everyone take care and have a nice day okay bye bye thank you yeah bye 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 thank you yeah thank you yes yes yes